I have been assigned the sixth word from the cross, John chapter 19, verse 30. It is finished. When he had received a drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. There's a famous song by Bill and Gloria Gaither, and in the lyric of that song, it says, there's a line that is drawn through the ages. On that line stands an old rugged cross. On that cross, a battle is raging to gain a man's soul or its loss. On one side march the forces of evil, all the demons and devils of hell. On the other, the angels of glory, and they meet on Golgotha's hill. The earth shakes with the force of the conflict, and the sun refuses to shine. With there hangs God's son in the balance, and then through the darkness he cries, it is finished, the battle is over, it is finished. When he died on the cross, Jesus was concerned about others. Jesus' first few words from the cross had to do with others. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said to the thief on his left, today you'll be with me in paradise. He said to his mother, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. And then there's a shift with that middle saying of the seven. He began to focus on God. He said, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? And then the last three of those statements of the seven focused entirely on his body, on his spirit, and on his soul. Jesus, my friend, was aware of every kind of suffering that is imaginable. Jesus on the cross, my friend, did not drink of the wine mixed with myrrh that was offered to him when he first arrived on Golgotha's hill. There were a group of women and they, through their ministry of compassion, would mix a lethal dose, a poisonous dose of myrrh mixed with wine, and this would hasten the death of those who were being crucified. It was an act of mercy, but when Jesus tasted of it, he would not drink. He would not drink. And so, while he's on the cross, they offer to him another drink. And this time, he drank it because it was solid wine. It did not have the murder. But as I focus on this this year, I begin to realize that when Jesus said it is finished, he was really saying three things. That this little word, tell to die in the Greek, has three different definitions and Jesus when he ordered this word really encapsulate all three of those meanings the first thing that tell to list means is that it is accomplished and if you read in verse 28 of the same chapter it says now when he knew that all things were accomplished he said I'm thirsty but he said, I am thirsty in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. John, and they offered him this is your to drink. And he drank and it gave him the strength in order for him to utter one last cry. And that cry he uttered was, it is finished. It is accomplished. How many times have you started something and you weren't able to finish it? How many times have you had somebody to say, well, you started it, why don't you finish it? How many of you started a marriage but couldn't finish it? How many of you started to raise children but couldn't? I have toys in the house I started fixing on Christmas Day and I haven't finished it. There's always something left undone in our lives. But when Jesus says it is finished, my friend, you can best believe that it's done. It's accomplished. But then something else this word means here. It means that it's paid in full. This word tell to list die is found on tax papers. And when folk would pay off their debts, 
when they would pay out their taxes, they would put this word on there as with a stamp, and it would say, paid in full. And when Jesus dies on that cross, what he's really doing is paying a debt that you and I could not pay. But not only does it mean in this little word, paid in full, not only does it mean accomplished, but it also means just what it says it means. It is finished. And so when Jesus says it is finished, notice he doesn't say, I am finished. For the disciples of Jesus thought the Jesus movement was over. The religious leaders thought that once they crucified him, the movement would be over. But Jesus knew that it was for this very reason that he came into the world. Yeah. Remember now, Jesus always had God's will on his mind. For even when he was 12 years of age, when he was in the temple and Mary lost the whereabouts of him, she thought that he was going back home with other members of the family. When he inter interacted on the way home, th there was no Jesus to be found. So Mary and Joseph ran back to the temple and they began to search for him diligently. And when Mary found him, she, she said, where have you been? Don't you know we were looking for you? And Jesus said to her, woman, did you know not that I would be about my father's business? You remember the wedding at Canaan of Galilee when Jesus was approached by Mary, this young couple. And usually it was to be the responsibility of the male to show for that he's able to take care of his new bride. But there at the wedding, they ran out of wine. And Mary came to Jesus and said, son, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what do I have to do with thee? Mine hour has not yet come. But then when we begin to read that Jesus really wanted to get to Calvary, some people think that he was trying to avoid it. Jesus always had Calvary on his mind. Oh, I want you to know he had to rebuke Peter because Peter said, far be it from your Lord to be crucified. Oh, but Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. I know I have a work to finish. Not only did Jesus have the cross on his mind, but he would repeatedly tell his disciples the Son of Man will be crucified, betrayed into the hands of sinful men. He will be crucified, but on the third day he will rise from the dead. Jesus always had the cross on his mind because when he would go to that cross, he would pay a price that you and I could not pay. It was a ransom price. Yeah, he was in the business of accomplishing something. And when he realized that it had already been accomplished, he said, I thirst. He said, it is finished. He gave up his spirit. I want you to know that the cross was the way of getting Jesus to his crown. Jesus was on that cross on his throne. He was on the most comfortable place for him to be. He had always wanted to get there on the cross. I, I know we're looking at it from another perspective, but I want you to know that that was the way Jesus would be glorified by the Father. He was not seeking to be glorified by people bowing down to him. He was seeking to be glorified by paying a debt that you and I could not pay. I want to know is there somebody here needs somebody to complete what they started. He that has begun a good work in you will complete it. I want you to know if it's left on our own, we're not going to get the job done. But I have to have somebody to help me. I know you've been saved for so long, you don't need God to help you. But I need God to help me because I can't be good enough. I need the blood of Jesus on me. He paid my ransom price. Yes, he did. But not only did he pay my ransom price, he uttered a victory cry. But when he said it is finished, it was finished. Not only did he provide the ransom cry, the ransom price, but he became the atoning sacrifice. It says that he would be the one who would offer up himself without blemish to God to put an end to sin. He would sacrifice himself. Not only did he pay the atoning sacrifice, but he was glorified. Not only was he glorified, he said, if I, if I, the Son of Man, be lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. That's the place he wanted to be. And while he was there on that cross, 
that was really his throne. He was sitting there on his throne. He was in complete control of what was happening. And when he knew all things had been accomplished, I want you to know it didn't happen to be accomplished when he finally died. When he realized that it had already been accomplished, when the Father had saw from heaven that he was the Lamb of God, I began to do the study with this little word, hyssoplant. They put the sponge on the hyssoplant and offered to him. So I ran on my computer and I ran a study on hyssop. And I began to realize that everywhere you find this word hyssop, there's a lamb somewhere. I want you to know that when Jesus said it is finished, he saw that all of the prophecies had been fulfilled. And when he said it is finished, you couldn't add to it. When Leonardo da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa, he stepped back from it and he saw that there were no more brush strokes needed. When Leonardo da Vinci painted the Last Supper, he stepped back from it and he saw that he didn't need no more brush strokes for it. When Michelangelo hewn out of a stone, the statue of King David, he stepped back, he put his tools down, and he said, it's finished. And when Jesus was there on the cross, when he accomplished what nobody else could do, when he saw that his soul became a suffering sacrifice for humanity, when he cried out on that cross, it is finished, he knew it was done. The soldier who was standing right there said, surely this was the son of God. The temple in the curtain was torn from top to bottom when Jesus said, it is finished. Downtown in the temple, they had the Passover lamb and they were sacrificing it. Oh, but somebody said our service been disrupted because the, the curtain in the temple has not been torn. Jesus on the cross, he was our key to paradise. He was the downfall of the devil. He was the uplifting of mankind. He was the constellation of our imprisonment. He was the prize of our freedom. He was the safeguard of our faith. He was the assurance of our hope. He was the throne of love. He was the sign of God's mercy. Jesus dying on the cross was the proof of forgiveness. He was the redeeming love. He was the praise. He was the peace. He was the righteousness of God. He was our redemption. That means he was the ransom payment. He was our propitiation. That means he satisfied God's justice wrath. He was our expiation. He became a curse for us. He was our justification. That means he set us free from all guilt. It is finished. Oh, it is finished. You don't have to try to add something to what's finished. Because when something is finished, it's finished. It's always will be finished.